Let us begin our video on non-arguments part two. This is a continuation of our discussion on non-arguments. In part one of this video we dealt with simple non-inferential passages. In this video we're going to deal with longer passages. These longer passages are also non-inferential and that is because there will not be an inference that is supported by premises. Keep in mind that the word inference is basically another way of saying a conclusion or that a conclusion has been drawn. And so in this case, there will be no, um, no, no such inference. And in that sense, these are also non-inferential. The only difference between these and the last ones that we discussed in our previous video is that these are a little bit longer in, in, and in some way a little bit more sophisticated. Let us begin with expository passages. With expository passages, we basically have a topic sentence and then the rest of the passage just serves as an elaboration or an exposition of that uh, topic sentence. Here's an example. Long Beach is a large city with many attractions and forms of entertainment. This city is so large that it borders a couple of cities in Orange County and several other cities in Los Angeles County. There are many places to visit and spend time, such as the beach and the Queen Mary. Downtown Long Beach has several restaurants and bars. Second Street also has many restaurants as well as shops. Okay, notice that here we do not have a conclusion. We basically have a topic sentence at the beginning. That is that Long Beach is a large city with many attractions and forms of entertainment. And then the rest of the passage just serves to elaborate or as an exposition of that topic sentence. There is no conclusion and there are no premises supporting that conclusion and this is why this is not an argument. Our next longer passage is an illustration. With illustrations you have a statement and then you have several examples that are given to illustrate exactly what that statement means. So think of the word illustration here as synonymous with examples. Very clear examples are given um, to illustrate what that statement means and those examples are not premises. It is very clear that they're not premises that are meant to support a conclusion, but only to give concrete examples so that uh, someone can understand exactly what that statement means. Here's an example. A carnivore is an animal that eats meat. Lions are examples of carnivores, carnivores but so are jaguars, cheetahs, and leopards. Okay, so here it is clear that we have a statement, and that is that a carnivore is an animal that eats meat, and then the other statement just gives us several examples of a carnivore, and that is basically what is meant here by uh, illustrating um, that a carnivore is an animal that eats meat. Okay, our next longer passage is an explanation. Explanations are passages that explain why something is the case. They typically explain phenomenon, and this is the type of phenomenon that we typically experience, um, and they give us the reason as to why that phenomenon occurs. Here's an example. Copper turns green over time because a process occurs known as oxidation. Oxidation involves the removal of electrons from copper. It also involves the gaining of oxygen. Okay, so here we see that it is very clear that the person is trying to explain to us why copper turns green over time. Um, explanations will typically contain the word because, but the word because here is not a premise. Um, typically the word because is a premise indicator, but in this case it is not a premise indicator. Um, the word because here is, is, is going to show us why the phenomenon occurs. Okay, not, lastly we have conditional statements. A conditional statement is a statement of the form if then. So all conditional statements will have the if part, which typically comes first, and then the then part, which comes second. Here's an example. If traffic is really bad today, then it will take me longer to get home. Okay, these two parts, the if part and the then part, do have names. The if part is known as the antecedent. And in this case, the antecedent is that traffic is really bad today. The then part is known as the consequent, and in this case, the consequent is it will take me longer to get home. Um, the, the names here, antecedent, is from Latin coming before.
for, anti, and then sedent. Uh, consequent meaning means basically that um, that part, the, the it will take me longer to get home, is a consequence of that antecedent, of that thing that comes first. And so the question here is why are we discussing conditional statements um, in a, a section devoted to non-arguments? Basically, another way to ask this question is why might someone think that conditional statements are arguments? Well, the reason for that is because it does look like there is an inferential relationship. It looks like the first statement, the antecedent, implies the second statement. Or in other words, it looks like we can infer the second statement from the first statement. But that is not at all the case. And, and to show you that that is not at all the case, I can give you a conditional statement where there is clearly no inferential relationship. Here it is. If the moon is made of green cheese, then Charlie Chaplin will dance tonight. Okay, this is definitely a conditional statement, but notice here there is absolutely no inferential relationship or implication between the two, right? These have absolutely nothing to do with each other, and, and one cannot be um, taken as an inference from the other or an implication of the other. So these are basically, conditional statements are basically interesting linguistic statements. Uh, remember, statements are sentences. But that is all they are. They are com complex statements, uh, but they are still statements. And keep in mind that statements are not arguments. And that is because, by definition, an argument is a group of statements um, such that uh, some are intended to prove the other, the other being the conclusion. Well, if we only have one statement, that is to say, if we only have a conditional statement, then by definition that cannot be an argument because that is only one statement. Okay. That is it for this video on non-arguments. Um, in our next video, um, on section 1.3, deduction and induction, we're going to focus on very specific types of arguments, which imply a very specific type or way of reasoning.